Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Candy, and today I wanna to talk to you about do you keep coming up empty when it comes to life? You know, everybody's looking for things like love, peace, joy, a sense of feeling alive, to be to feel alive on the inside. And the problem is that this world, this broken world that we live in, keeps redirecting us to possessions, to obtaining things, careers, and to accomplish that only to come out feeling empty once we obtain it. If you want to have a good time, it says go get drunk, go party. It doesn't talk about the consequences of afterwards, the hangovers, the poor decisions that were made throughout that partying. Uh, if you want to be loved, go sleep around until you find the one. doesn't talk about the consequences of catching STDs, of losing your self-respect and your value. If you want to be happy, then you got to get rich and go after that job that's out there only to feel the same way before you even start it, empty. But life isn't about achievements or gaining material things. It's not about what you're gonna do for a living. And that's where we get it mixed up, guys. It's about who you become. So I'm talking about living your true self. And, it, and that's what it's about, living out your true self. You know, I've experienced um, glimpses in my walk with God, in my relationship, even before I came to Christ, of that greatness that is inside of me that I did not realize was there. And it would happen in a moment, a situation, an experience, and, I, and it would wow me. And I would think, you know, that's who I want to be. And it's actually in those moments that you can see why God made you. Now, I've said this before and I'll never get tired of saying this. If you want to know your full potential and what you were created for, go to the source. Go to God. Because he has seen already the best version of you. You know, there's a scripture and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you. It's in Ephesians 2.10. It says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What this is saying is that you and I are God's project. We're not our own. And he has created us to do so many good works. And so it's about becoming the person that God had in mind when he created us. There's another scripture uh, it's in Psalms 92, 12 through 13. I'm going to read that one. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree, and they're going to flourish in the courts of our God. Another word for flourish is to grow. And as God helps you grow in him, you're moving towards his best version of you. And you're going to begin to change for those of you that are, are new in Christ, you've, you've just given your life to Jesus, or for those of you that are just curious and are just listening to see if, if anything that I'm saying is going to connect some dots for you. When you come to Christ, you begin to experience some change, but it's not, you don't change into someone else different, but you change into becoming more of you, if that makes sense. Think about, think about an infant, a baby. A newborn that every day is growing and they don't become a whole different other person they actually every day they're growing more and more into themselves something I want you to understand is that God pre-wired your temperament being that your temperament is what you were the traits you were born with if you're quiet if you're naturally a quiet person, uh, easygoing, 
apprehensive or maybe you're rowdy and noisy just by just by nature these are the traits that you were born with and a lot of times most of the time your parents they actually can see them in you when you're a baby i'll give you an example of how god will use those traits that he's deposited in us as we're growing there's an example of you know, we're going to see a strong-willed child. And we see them as strong-willed. We see we, we categorize them as stubborn, rebellious. Uh, they're, you know, they're very uh, hard. They don't listen. They have their own agenda. But those are traits that God developed in them. And that child grows into an adult with what we would call formidable leadership skills. And I would say an indomitable drive. Now those words are pretty heavy. They're only, they're only 50 cents, don't, don't freak out. To be formidable, it means that you carry yourself in such a way that you actually intimidate people because of the greatness, because of a power that you exude in you that comes out and people are kind of like, they're not scared of you like they fear for their lives, but they're definitely, you definitely have their attention because they know that you are someone that makes things happen. Uh, to have that indomitable drive, it means that you don't allow yourself to be subdued. You are brave, you're determined. And those are traits, characteristics that God has deposited in people, right? I don't know what they are for you, but think back on the way you've been described, maybe through your childhood growing up, and it may have had a negative connotation to it, not realizing and not being uh, placed or nurtured, grown into the things of God to realize that those are things that God put in you, that he wants to grow in you, even today, even now as an adult. And so when you flourish or when you grow, you're becoming more you. And you begin to appreciate yourself, love yourself as God loves you. And instead of seeing yourself through the eyes of this broken world, ruled by the lying devil, the prince of, of darkness, because think about it, what are some lies that you've been believing about yourself that have kept you from being the best version of you and living that life to the fullest? Maybe as a young child, you experienced rejection and therefore you, over time and experiences and added on situations, you find yourself feeling less than, not worthy, you feel like everybody else can accomplish things, but not you. But before you know it, that brings on bad habits, watching too much TV, you're drinking until you get drunk, excess spending, you don't have monies, you ha you're very undisciplined and you spend more, you go more into debt. Uh, we're using sex as a, a, a way to find love. Because all of these things that I just mentioned, they tend to numb the pain. And, but that's all. That, it just numbs it for a while. But think about it if you were to begin to see yourself through the eyes or the way that Jesus sees you. The one who created you. And because he has taken our broken, messed up selves. I, I'm a prime example. And he comes and he repairs and he restores and he redeems us. And when you experience that salvation from God, your spirit and God's spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, comes to be one. And it becomes evident because now you have a desire to grow. You want to learn. There's an expectancy. There's a peace. And you're not high, you're not drunk, you're not even in a relationship. Because sometimes 
We want to find that love and that peace and enjoy in a person. Nothing wrong with relationships. God is with for marriages, things of that nature. But I'm talking about where your reason for pursuing a relationship is to, is to find those things that I mentioned earlier. And you're going to come out empty. And so you wake up with a sense of, of wanting to live, wanting to see what it is that God has for you. Every day is a gift from God. And so you're, you're quick to forgive people that hurt you uh, because living with resentment feels heavy, feels ugly. So maybe, maybe you've been living your life following the guidelines, the advice of this broken society, of this world versus going to God, the one who created you. I want to encourage you to stop and evaluate yourself because it's worth doing. You are worth doing that. And so do some soul searching and see what it is that God wants to show you. So if you happen to be coming up empty, when you're pouring yourself into careers, relationships, materialistic things, you know, you get a car, you get the next car, you get an iPhone, you get the next iPhone, your, your house is full of furniture, uh, quality brands, and you still go to bed feeling empty. You have a great person in your life, but it's not enough. I want you to, I want you to do some soul searching and I want you to open up your heart and your eyes and your ears, your spiritual eyes and ears and see what it is that God can show you because God has something for everyone. And that is to become the best version of what he originally created you to be. So I hope this video helps. If you like it, uh, share it, like it, uh, subscribe to it. And as always, mwah, do something good for you. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.